All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of layering inside Substance 3D Painter. So to get started, just know that there are three basic ways that I start almost every layer. The first one and the most obvious one is bringing in a, an existing material from our asset library. So for something like that, I can either scroll through here to find it, or I can use our little search functionality here at the top, and this will just filter. So if I'm looking for concrete, it'll search out all my concretes, and then I can just drag and drop them onto the model. And as you can see, it will apply that to the entire texture set as a whole uniform thing. In future videos, we'll talk about how we can isolate that to individual components. So that is a very common way of adding a layer, and you can see it's added to our layer stack here. We've got all of our individual parameter controls where I can change the color. I can change the number of cracks in it. I can change the uh, how dirty it is. We can add dirt to this guy um, and really add all of those elements in as well. So that is now added to our layer stack list. If I wanted to create my own fill layer that covers the entire object, I can certainly do that by clicking this paint bucket right here that'll say add a fill layer. This is a second layering type. And what happens is, is that layer gets draped over top of everything, right? So imagine, like I always think of it like a coat of paint that covers everything. And if you're painting a concrete wall, what's gonna happen is the roughness, that height is always going to be there because that just gets layered on top, but the color changes and like the roughness changes, so it's a little bit more reflective. If it was covered in a metal, the metalness would change and that kind of thing. So know that when you're layering things together, it's going to layer how they do normally in reality. Now you can certainly change those. So we're in the base color layer stack. I mean, I could change this to either be a different layering functionality or reduce the contribution of it. And same thing here with the height. I can go in here and say, you know what? By default, these are being added as an adding feature or a linear dodge. But I could certainly just say like, hey, this fill layer, I actually just want to layer top that normally and actually replace the layer underneath it. Or I can keep it as it is and just say, you know what? This concrete's a little bit too high. I'm going to go ahead and pull that down. An industry that where this really comes into handy that I really like to use it is with apparel. So let's say I had a suit material. I really like this uh, a fabric vintage suit material. And I like this and I think it's looking great. And I, you know, I my top color is gonna be a little bit more red, awesome. And I actually want to uh, scale this down a little bit because it's not quite scalable with this model. Awesome. Um, but you know what, like actually, it's still just going red with the pattern. I actually want to change the entirety of it. Or perhaps I have a 2D pattern that I want to put on there. No problem at all. If I create a new layer, um, and then I can you know, change the color of this. Hey, and you know, like I can update that. But okay, cool. But now you can see that that fabric is still there. So even though you may be designing your own custom uh, jeans, shirts, denim, whatever, you can add the base bumpiness, the height to it that looks like that, and then you can just work with the color on top of it. It's really, really, really beneficial. Um, the other layer type that you can create is a paint layer, and that's the paintbrush here. And now I can, again, I can go on here, um, and by default, it's just a soft edge brush. I can go in and say like, all right, cool. Um, I can just add the color, and if I scroll down here, you can say, um, you know, I've got all these different attributes and I can change, you know, I can make the color red and now it's red. I can make it metallic red and now it's metallic red. And I can make the roughness go all the way down. And now it's like this super shiny reflective. You can also paint the height. So I kind of talked about that. And if I, if I go all the way up to one and I paint that, you can see it pushes it out or gives the appearance that it's pushing it out. Or I can go to negative one and it can give the appearance of it pushing down it. Now, the one downside of using the paint layer is I can't, like if I wanted to actually, you know what, this isn't blue, I want, this isn't red, I want to make it blue. I would have to go through and repaint everything. Um, in the next video, I'll show how you can actually use a masking operation inside of a fill layer to get that look and make it a little bit less non-destructive. 
But overall, these are the three main layering types. And oh, I should mention this too about the, the paint layer. It's not always just about painting color. Substance Painter is fantastic about having dynamic brushes in here too. So if I go to my brushes and let's say, you know, I've got this garment and I wanted to put some stitch work on here, we have dynamic stitch, stitch brushes as well. So if I select one of these, you can see that I can now paint uh, stitch work on this and it follows my cursor around and it'll follow that too. So I can actually go in and again, just like anything else, I can uh, like if I wanted to paint around his waist, I can just go and I can either, you know, I can either just drag it like this in the viewer. I can do it at the 2D view. And the other really great thing is I can hold down the shift key and that'll create a straight line in the 2D view. So you can see now that it can wrap around really nicely. So that's just a, an intro to kind of the three basic layering types that I can create. Again, I can grab things over here from the... Um, asset window i can uh create my own layers just by clicking fill or paint and then down here um oh and yeah so fill paint and drag them over and then each time that you you know regardless of what you create you'll get your specified parameter settings down here for each individual function